Episode 2 of This Is Us 2 is brought to you by Minute With Mary, the best place to discover new makeup and uncover your confidence as a woman. So head on over to MinuteWithMary.com or search the hashtag Minute With Mary on Facebook and start the road to a new confident you. I like to think that maybe one day you'll be an old man like me. Talking a younger man's ear off, explaining to him how you took the sourest lemon that life has to offer and turned it into something resembling lemonade. If you can do that, then you will still be taking three babies home from this hospital. Maybe not the way you planned. From Cranston, Rhode Island, welcome to This Is Us 2. It's a podcast dedicated to the show This Is Us on NBC, so sit back, relax, and let's all have a good cry. Hello, everyone. I'm your host, Mary Larson. My name's Blake, and I never thought I'd be so happy to see Major Dad again in my life. (laughs) Ma- Major Dad made my life. I, I, wow, that was, that was some good old memories from back in like 1992. Oh my gosh, I love it. Watching it with, uh, with, with Ma Larson and Papa Larson. <laughs> Little did I know that this is what was going through your mind oh when my. we watched this episode. Oh my goodness! Yay! Well, I welcome, love it. welcome. Yes, uh, this is the actual first episode of This Is Us too. Well, I mean, not the. I mean, we had a premiere episode, but this is like the first... This is the first real episode where we're going to dive deep into an episode of the show. Of course, this is about the pilot episode, the first episode of This Is Us. Mm -hmm. Now, we are well aware that This Is Us has been on TV for a little while. Mm -hmm. This is not coming out when the show is brand new. No, not at all. We're a little late to the party. We're actually two um, seasons late to the party. (laughs) (laughs) But it's all good because, you know, this show is worth podcasting about. And I'm really excited to do this with with you, Blake. And um, for those of you who've already watched the show, we would love for you to either rewatch or just listen to these podcast episodes and feel like, oh, yes. Oh, I loved that episode or that episode. Yeah, I felt this way. And if you have not yet watched This Is Us, now's the time. You know what I I was thinking about? Because, you know, I got a little worried because we have never done a podcast like this late i mean we've always done like when we did the leftovers it was from the beginning when Mm -hmm. we did outlander it was at the beginning Mm -hmm. um when we did gilmore girls it was at the beginning of the netflix series so it was always at the beginning but i always i've thought about it like this you know how like you go talk to a friend and you're like you gotta watch Gilmore Girls. Oh, you got to watch Breaking Bad. You got to watch Lost. Oh, you got to watch Battlestar Galactica. I I wish I could, like, you know, weird light thingy memory away from, you know, like Men in Black. Okay. And, like, wipe my memory away and watch those shows over again and relive how amazing Lost was, right? Yes. Or relive how amazing Breaking Bad was. Or Parks and Rec. Yeah, they go back and just, like, (laughs) totally forget what the hell happened at Parks and Rec. Yes, I know. And have it for the first time. And, And we may be that. We're going to be that for you. <laughs> we will be this for you. We will crazy light thingy yes. your memory away and you'll get to outlive or relive the experience of This Is Us through our virgin eyes. And once again, if you haven't watched it, now's a fun time to start. Right. Why not? Yes. You know, and watch it with us. Exactly. We're all family. Screw it. So we finished the first episode yes, of did. This Is Us. And Blake, how do you connect to this episode? Oh, the birth no question when when my wife was giving birth um and I was obviously the person that you're listening to on the other uh, the other voice of this show um when when mary was giving birth i just felt helpless i felt like there was nothing i could do she was in a lot of pain uh for our for our first child our son and i just remember being confused not knowing what was going to happen because we had our doula. She was standing up on my wife's bed and my wife was on all fours and they had this long 
cloth <laughs> that is called a rebozo, I guess. And they had to manually reposition my son Reese, and that we had to. She was there, like it was like it was like uh, shining a bowling ball. That's what it looked like to me. Except it was my belly. It was your belly, <laughs> <laughs> and the amount of pain that you were in uh, was. Um, I was confused. I was lost. I was um, hurt. Like, um, I, and I was. I felt <laughs> I totally emasculated uh, because there was nothing I could do I, for for um, for my wife. And uh, I always feel like it's a it's the husband's duty to be there to provide and protect his wife, and I couldn't do that at all. So that is how I related to this episode because the the mass confusion and the the, the sense of being overwhelmed um, it really hit me. It really made me feel like, man, this this is this is real stuff here. This is this is someone who has been through that experience and knows exactly how to put it on paper and doing a much better job than I could right now. <laughs> we'll put it that way. Just so you know, the name of this podcast is This Is Us 2, meaning This Is Us Also. The <laughs> T-O-O, not T-O-O. T-W-O. And we're going to give each episode a rating. And we figured after this episode, it was a no-brainer. It was like, what is our rating well, scale going to be on? Because Each of our podcasts all have rating systems. Mm-hmm. For The Leftovers, it was Damon's after <laughs> Damon Lindelof. For Outlander, it's Kilts. For Gilmore Girls, when we did You've Been Gilmore, it was Cups of Coffee. Yep. For... This is us, my darling. What are we doing? Lemonade. Yes. So it's going to be at a one to five for the episode. Right. And if the episode's great, it'll be five lemonades. And if it's one, it'll be one lemonade. Um, so Or anything in between. Yes, or anything in between. Exactly. So for me, this episode was a five. I thought it was a fantastic pilot. I got already all the feels. I will go into all these reasons later. But this episode got five lemonades from me. How about you, Blake? 4.9. That's one of the highest ratings you've ever given anything. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I, I reserve, <laughs> I'm shocked. I reserve fives for very special episodes of television. Mm. Like perfect episodes of yeah. television. Okay. Perfect. So let's find out what wasn't perfect. The next uh, thing we're going to talk about is what we thought was good in an episode. The bad. The bad. And the great. We, for, and for short, we call it the GBG. The GBG. So, the GBG. my love, what is your GBG for the pilot episode of This Is Us 2? Why did you give it a five? Okay, so my good was when Kevin came home during Kate and Toby's <laughs> date because he comes home and you could tell Toby was like, oh my God, you have a hot boyfriend. Oh my God, you have a hot roommate. What is going on? This is crazy. It's the Manny. Oh, it's your brother. I just, the humor that went on and how Toby handled it and everything, I just loved it. I loved that entire <laughs> I just love Toby. Um, (laughs) My bad was the smoking in the hospital. And even though that was the coolest transition to make you realize that was the moment you truly got smacked in the face that this is in the past, that this is actually a flashback because obviously you can't smoke in hospitals. But then when they panned out and you got to see everyone's attire, I became so uncomfortable with how many people were smoking in a hospital. And how thick the smoke was. Oh my God. Like you could cut it with a knife. (laughs) And it was like, I just, I got so uncomfortable. I feel like I started to cough. So that made me uncomfortable. <laughs> um, and then my great for this episode was the, the, the chat with, with Jack and the doctor. Oh um, yeah. Okay. That Major even, dad. Yeah. That <laughs> we even had some of it in the beginning. Um, I just, that's when I cried. That's mm-hmm. when I cried. So I feel like all my greats for this show are going to be like when I cried, but Blake, what I'm was sure. your GBG? What was your good, bad and great? Um, you see, I feel like we're kind of in the same vein here. My good for this was the reveal at the end. And you, you know, the ending for a pilot is so important mm-hmm. and they took everything that you had questions about and they gave you a wrap up in a certain way. Like they, they, they revealed it that this was going to be a fat flash forward, yep. flashback type show. They gave you the emotional catharsis of the, the, of the two kids and then the adoption. They, and they, they, they gave the answer to what happened to Randall it, all in one thing, but it left you with more questions and it left you, it wrapped it up, but it helped propel you. It had more momentum going yes. forward. And that was just excellent. The bad. 
I was not a huge fan of the conversation between Randall and his dad when when Randall first showed up. Okay. Um, it was like it was like so mean. It was like I got that car. I bought it for cash because I felt like it. And f you, da 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 da. And he's like, "You want to come in?" He's like, "Yeah." And I just felt the show felt so natural to me. Okay. But this part felt written to me. I would say that this part felt really awkward, meaning that that's probably how things happen in life when you're dealing with something really crazy like yeah, that. But, but I can appreciate so, it was so like disparate. You yes. know, the the two the two uh the two tones. Mm -hmm. Like it was so mad that all of a sudden it was like, Yeah, I'll come in. <laughs> and then it was, Oh, uh, you know, the, you I hate you and I just wanna say screw you and storm out. You wanna come see your kids or your grandkids? It's like I didn't. I wasn't a big fan of that. Okay, and that's why I have to give it a four point nine because okay. that took it down a step for me. I can appreciate. But how the, about your great? The how great, great. The great. It, like you, my love. It was the conversation yes. between between Major Dad, and 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 uh, and Jack. Mm -hmm. So emotional. Um, so it, it's fatherly. It's it's tender. It's what I want any doctor in my life to be like. Yes. Yes. Um, I just it's when it that was the moment that you got that full emotional catharsis mm -hmm. when you get that full wallop of this is what this show is capable of doing emotionally. Yes. And ultimately, when it comes down to it, I, I think that's what's going to matter most to the, to this show. Mm -hmm. And we'll we'll get into that in, in a little bit. But that is my good bad. And great. But for now, my darling, are you ready to get into the show? Anything else you got to say? You bet. All right, let's do it. Well, Marvin, the title for this episode is called Pilot. <laughs> now, it's not, there's no pilots in this episode. There's no you know, planes or whatever. It's just that whenever, um, uh, especially a network television, whenever they come up with a brand new show, they create or they uh, film the first episode and then they say, okay, we're going to go sell this to networks or we're going to go sell this to uh, NBC or ABC or CBS or whatever. And then the, the network will decide, oh, I like this show. Uh, I like the pilot, the, the first premiere episode. Let's go make some more of it. So the, the pilot, what we just saw, was shot well before the rest of the season. Mm -hmm. um, and they actually had to get it approved. And then, they, then it was ordered to season. They order a specific amount. And then we have a full season of television. So that's why it's called Pilot. And for pretty much any episode of television that you watch, unless it's already ordered to full season before it's even produced, every first episode will be called Pilot. And that, a little bit of a television, uh, Look at you. television knowledge there. I love that. The director of this episode, actually two guys, uh, Glenn Ficarra and John Requa. These guys are actually the main directors of the show. They're one, the, one of the main producers of the show. Uh, they were. They actually have directed a couple of different movies: Whiskey Tango Foxtrot with uh, that one with Tina Fey. Mm -hmm. They directed that movie Focus with Will Smith and Margot Robbie. And they also directed a favorite of mine, Crazy Stupid Love, the one with Ryan Gosling and Steve Carell, Emma Stone. Um, you, you know, just that movie. That's like the <laughs> precursor, I feel like, to, to La La Land. Okay. Because you could just see, you could see the chemistry there All between right. the two. Okay. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, and the writer of this episode was actually the uh, showrunner, Dan Fogelman. He actually co-runs the show with Don Todd, another writer. Uh, and Fogelman has actually written screenplays for Cars, the movie. Love. Uh, Fred Claus. Love. Bolt. Love. Uh, that's a that's a, a, a favorite of our children. <laughs> uh, he wrote the story for Cars 2, which not a big fan of. No. Not going to lie. Didn't love as much. Wrote the screenplay for the movie Tangled. Love. Uh, I know you love. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He actually wrote Crazy Stupid Love, the movie. He wrote The Guilt Trip, the one with Seth Rogen and um, and uh, Babs. And uh, he also wrote a couple of episodes of the, the show Grandfathered, the one with John Stamos, when he becomes a grandfather out of nowhere. I haven't watched that one. Uh, neither, I didn't neither even have know I. anything like that existed. <laughs> I may have to Google that. <laughs> and he's also created the shows Gallivant and Pitch, and he was the showrunner uh, for another show prior to this called The Neighbors. Okay. On Fox. All right. Awesome. So that is that. So what you're getting here is you're getting the 18. 
you're getting the A team for the pilot episode. I love it. So, my darling. Yeah. What did you think? I know you gave this episode a, a I five. I gave it a five. I gave it a straight up five because it, it moved me in many ways and I just, I ate it all up. And part of the reason that I ate it all up right away was the 36th birthday because I'm turning 36 mm-hmm. in a mere couple of months. And I don't know why I'm not really excited about this year. Um, You're on the downward end. I'm on, yeah, thank you. <laughs> the, the, the downward thank end. You. I You're was well into the 30s. I was pumped for 35. I was like, this is so cool. When there's a zero or five, I really am excited. And now, I don't know. And I, um, I really connected with so many of these characters. And that is what shook me and why I believed that we needed to do this as a podcast. Because mm-hmm. w- I've always said to Blake, I need to love a character. I need to cheer for a character. I really need to love someone. You need a Hurley. Yeah, <laughs> not her, but yes, sure. you you need a Hurley uh, to to love that I really care about that I want to see them succeed or I want to be there for them, and this pilot episode made me feel that way about many characters, all of whom were thirty six, and I'm going to be thirty six. Right. So, um, what first I the first thing that I noticed I connected with was the thought about hope. And and or positive thinking. Mm-hmm. I'm all about the the law of attraction. Oh my god! All the about the secret and the law of attraction oh and putting goodness. out positivity into the universe. And that's what you get back. And when Jack was there in the delivery room and saying, "No, you don't understand. We are leaving with three babies. Mm-hmm. We have this stuff." That's how I often talk. Right. I don't have. I I hope. I hope I do this. No, I speak in the tense of this is happening. This is what I have decided. This is what I am doing. And I am working towards this goal. And I saw that I went, oh, my God, Jack's a believer of the law of attraction. Jack's a believer of positive thinking. (laughs) I love Jack. I love him. Right. And he's 36, just like me. And they don't even have a a flipping bed. Did you notice that? They just had mattresses on the floor. I did. I did notice that. And we have a really crummy mattress. And there's part of me that's like, oh, man, we're 35. And, you know. My our mattress sucks. It does. It's one of those foam mattresses that's probably about ten years too old. But at least, <laughs> at least, it's like a hand me down from a hand me down. Uh, but on the flip side, I've been beating myself up about. Both of us have been beating ourselves up about this mattress. I'm thinking, you know, we're supposed to be so much more established and put together, and you know, be like real adults by the time you're 36. And I loved this. I loved how these characters are just starting their family mm-hmm. at 36. So many people, especially nowadays, I mean, 36, having kids at 36 in that day and age was old. Yeah, this was like 1980-ish. Kids. You know? So it's like, it was the older crowd if you were going to be having kids then. And now people are are having families later on in life. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I have friends who are debating, like, is 36 too old to get pregnant? Is 36 too old to have kids? And it's not. And I loved that. And I loved seeing them mattresses on the floor because <laughs> there are so many people who think that things are supposed to be perfect because that's what we see on Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest and what you see in TV shows. And then this TV show shows you people who are 36 in an apartment in an apartment with those old radiators yes with their <laughs> mattress on the floor and you love them and you see how how fully grateful they are for their life mm-hmm. and their love with each other and their excitement for these babies because that is what matters mm-hmm. they have a full life at 36 don't matter that there's just a mattress on the floor they are loved and they are welcoming three babies into this world Right. And the beauty of this opening, uh, the beauty of the opening is that it tells you so many different things um, in, in, in a short scene. Mm-hmm. It tells you so many. They live in Pittsburgh because he has the, he yep. has the, he has the, the terrible towel. Yep. He has the terrible towel. Yep. That means he's a Steelers fan. Mm-hmm. And another thing that they do, too, is that they tell you right up front that this is in the this is nineteen eighty. They tell you right up front. You want to know why? Tell me. Because they show you the 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 box with the family photos. Mm-hmm. It says seventy five to seventy nine. Now, when you're watching it the first time, you don't know. It's like, the first you, shot. It's like it's a first sweeping, shot. moving. Yes. You feel like okay, that's just an old box. You know, they're moving. You know, whatever. Um, and maybe, maybe that's why there's only uh, mattresses on the floor because they're moving. 
Oh. Did you ever think of that? Maybe. Nope. I just, I just thought. Oh. No. no let's, let's think about it the other way. Because they're not you know put what? together just like us. It makes us feel better about ourselves. <laughs> we have a bed, but we have a really crummy mattress, so it's all you know. <laughs> um, but it tells you that they are, they are madly in love immediately. He is still very attracted to his wife. By the way, I will also admit, I don't think I've ever found my wife as more attractive as than when she was when she was pregnant. I Get thought, out. Seriously, you were smoking, um, not to say you were, but you were smoking hot when it's you were pregnant. because I had acid reflux. <laughs> she used to she used to get up in the middle of the night, stretch out her neck like a giraffe, you know? <laughs> Be like, Ugh, I'm breathing like a dragon. That's all I would say. <laughs> I feel like a dragon. <laughs> but it tells you a lot about these characters. Mm -hmm. And they have these traditions and the dance and the whole the thing. The traditions. Ugh. Uh, and they have yes. the dance and he wants it. And um, it, it's, it's just a great opening scene. Mm -hmm. And then to... To um, to give the payoff the way that you that they did at the end of the episode was spectacular. It was brilliant. It really was brilliant. It, it's spect because you know. Listen, I am not a huge fan of network television. I'm just not. And call me an elitist. Call me um, call me a snob. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to take that. No problem. I specifically watch either cable network shows or pay network like HBO stars, but pretty, pretty exclusively. I think the last one I watched was actually Hannibal on, oddly enough, NBC. Um, and and get, going into this show, I was a little worried because I, I was afraid that we were going to get the same kind of writing that you would normally get from a network television show. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like mediocre to subpar. But this really wasn't. In fact, I would argue, I would argue that this premiere episode, if you really wanted to dig dirty into it, you could make this whole premiere episode a movie unto itself. Yes. You could totally make it a movie unto itself. Yes. I mean, it would be like one of those mid-range, you know, low-budget dramas. Mm -hmm. and, but it would be a fantastic movie, especially with the reveal at the end. Because that reveal does so much. It expands the world. And they talk about at the beginning of the episode with that little with the with the um, with the words in the the opening statements of the of the show, the saying that you know there are eighteen million people per day that share the same birthday. There's nothing that says that they are connected in any other way. And then you realize that these are the parents and these are their kids. I love it. I love it. And it blows your mind away because it opens up the scope of this show. In any way that it wants to go. If it wants to give you the current days with the children, it can. If it wants to give you flash forwards with the children, it can. If it wants to give you flashbacks with the parents, it can. And that, again, it was one of the things that kind of worried me about this show because like, all right, how, what are they going to be able to do? Like, how, what are they going to be able to show? How long can this show go on? It's going to get limited in, in its storytelling because, mm -hmm. you know, it's a, it's a personal little drama and it felt like it was just going to be like this. It's going to be like the movie Crash. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Where they have all these separate people and they're all interconnecting at one point, somehow, some way. But they took that connection and just went. They made a whole what? universe. And they and that's that's that was the beauty of that ending because, like I said, it gave you an emotional catharsis and asked and left you with a bunch more questions. It propelled your momentum going into the rest of the series. And I would say that this is probably the best pilot, one of the best pilots I've mm -hmm. ever seen. Probably the, the only pilot, there's two pilots I think of that are better, Breaking Bad and Lost. So it's in the top three. It's it's definitely in the top three. Correct. I I would agree, and it might even be the best. I Maybe would say it's 24. definitely one of my top three. It's definitely one of my top three. Mm -hmm. So... We're not going to let these episodes go too long, especially for those of you who are reliving um, This Is Us with us. But you said that this episode left you with some questions. And um, I think some of my questions are going to be, how are the three siblings, like, what is their relationship like now in their adult life? Sure. You know, we didn't get to see Randall really interact at all with with his siblings we saw the picture and we saw the manny poster sign yeah. which is amazing but how do they interact um are they living near each other like what what obviously kate and kevin live near each other because he comes on over that quickly yeah why is randall so separated 
like what why why does he feel so distant from everybody else? Do you know what I mean? But on the flip side, I mean, he has a family and kids. Right. So he's, you know, celebrating his birthday maybe with them. But I'm just interested to see what the sibling relationship is like. I'm interested to see how, um, you know, the parents parent, <laughs> like what their parenting style is. Like if we get to see the newborn times and how tired and everything. I mean, we've just recently left that. We have a two-year-old and four-year-old. So <laughs> I'm interested to see. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. What that's like. I did connect. So I'm going to tell you who I love. I love Jack and I love Kate. Okay. I love Kate because I have been battling uh, some weight issues personally since I've had these two kids. And um, she said something that she said, I ate my dream life away. Mm. And she had all these sticky notes and you could tell she's a smart woman. And she knows, she knows like so many people who have eating issues, you know what you're not supposed to eat. You could put those sticky notes and then you put a second sticky note on that cake because you know, you're going to pull that sticky note off and you have those self talks. And I saw this and I am not 300 some odd plus uh, pounds, but I am definitely not at a weight that I'm comfortable with. I'm not a weight that I'm proud of. I don't like how I feel about myself. You're definitely not the blonde chick saying it's not, you don't know what it's like (laughs) to have seven extra pounds. If there was one person I could probably murder on this planet, it would be her. Like, what are you doing, dude? Yeah. And And Toby's reaction. Oh my gosh. He's like, oh my God. Like what? what? I also love Toby. Toby's great. Toby is very good. I right? just, I love, I, I feel like I Toby, Toby might be your spirit animal on he, this show. He might be. Jack might be mine and yes. Toby might be yours. <laughs> right? He's <laughs> just like, he's like, it, 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 when he's talking to the other lady, he's like, it, like, I'm way fatter than you if it makes you feel any better. <laughs> I personally like that he said the dessert was his life's work. Yes. I'm that, pretty sure that's what you've said on a first date. That is exactly why I relate. I should have said that was the story that I related to. Right. <laughs> the dessert the emotional issue. birth. The dessert issue. Uh, oh one of the gosh. things I related to as well, mm-hmm. this is more of a meta commentary, and I'm so happy that this was put in. It's when we have, when he's filming the Manny, yep. and he has that moment, that breakout, freak out moment. He's yes. like, it's not the writer's fault that this show sucks. It's not my fault that this show sucks. It's not, it's not my fault that I'm famous. It's your fault. It's you, the audience's fault, because you allow us to put this crap on television and you soak it up. And I was like, that is such a great commentary. Right, in a show, on in a major a show, network. On a network. That shows shows that aren't really good that people soak up. It's like all the CSIs, <laughs> NCISs. And, and if you like that, please, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Please don't let Blake I'm, I'm judging you a little bit. Oh I'm, God, I'm, judging a, I'm judging a hair. A hair. <laughs> because like criminal minds in and a bull all those it's all know. the same thing I don't even know. it's all the same show anyway i loved that moment because i thought that was i thought that was just a great commentary uh by fogelman on the current state of uh, the second golden age of television which i was which is again fantastic uh my my darling yep. uh, you have anything else any final thoughts the other thing that i loved that i just need to make sure i can say is um when kate says repeats the phrase that I guess dad Jack used to say what did dad say about lemons there's no lemon so sorry that you can't make something resembling lemonade right and I love that um once again for her to have said that at 36 years old right you know um it shows you how powerful that statement is how often that's said in their lives correct and uh it it uh it wraps up all of those I don't want to say plot lines, but it wraps up that emotional emotional through line, mm-hmm. and it's the beginning of the reveal yes. for the for the dad. Yep. So, oh, just I love it. Just it was a it was an exceptional pilot. It really blew my expectations away. I'm really excited. I I, I got to admit I am too. I'm still I'm a little weary. I'm a little weary, but I'm very excited. Like, All right. I'm I'm in a much better place than I thought it was going to be. Are you ready to close up the show? Uh, yeah, I think I am. All right, let's do it. So this is the first episode and we're so excited to be bringing you more episodes. As I said, watch along with us, rewatch along with us, or just 
think about the episodes with us. Let us know what you think. You can find Blake and I on our main website, maryandblake.com. You can email us at maryandblakemedia at gmail.com. We would love to engage with you on Facebook. Right now you can find us just by searching Mary and Blake. Um, and you can use the hashtag, this is us too, on social media. We would love to know your thoughts. Find us in all of your major podcast apps. Tell your friends. And That's the best thing you do. Tell a friend that we exist. Yeah, because this is still our brand new. Yeah. It's brand spanking new. And everyone's going to say, give us reviews. Yeah, and those are all important. But tell a friend that we exist. I'm Mary. My name's Blake. And this is us too.